Hi, I'm Katherine Dungan. I'm a graduate student at the University of Arizona and a research assistant at the Center for Desert Archaeology since 2008. My work uses Fornholt as a springboard to look at the 13th century in um, the Upper Gila and the Eastern Mogollon Highlands more generally. I volunteered for the Center's project in Mule Creek in 2008 and was just so impressed with the location and the people that I really wanted to stay involved with the project. And then when the opportunity came to work at this 13th century site, it was such a fantastic opportunity that I didn't want to miss it. There are a number of things that are very interesting about Mule Creek as a research site. We like to say that it's the geographic center of the Southwest. At the same time, it's never been really central to Southwestern prehistory. Of course, it's also, for the Southwest, been fairly poorly studied. So the opportunity to make a contribution in an area that isn't very well known, to work in an area that's lovely as this, and to work on these topics involving borders and interaction and migration make this a fabulous place to work. The area remains a border through time. In the 11th century, it's at the border between the Mimbris region and what's going on in the Mogollon Highlands. In the Mimbris, you have the classic Mimbris period, which is characterized by larger masonry structures and the very famous painted bowls. Around 1000 AD, in the Mogollon Highlands, the archaeology is described uh, by what archaeologists call the reserve phase, where you have very small pueblos that are dispersed over the landscape and that maybe share a single ceremonial structure, a great kiva. In around 1175 or 1200, the pattern becomes what's called the Tularosa phase, which involves much denser pueblos where you'll have several smallish room blocks of 10 or 15 or 20 rooms, which together make up a site of perhaps up to 100 rooms. These sites will have large ceremonial structures that are integral to the site, uh, which is a change from previously. The Tularosa phase component of the Fornholt site is two masonry room blocks. The southern one is larger. We think it probably stood two stories in places, and it's built around a large depression that is probably a, a large kiva, but may also be a plaza. There's definitely an earlier component at the site. There are the remains of a, a Mimbris classic Pueblo. There are a number of depressions that suggest the site had a substantial pit house component as well. There's a very interesting potential for studying the relationship between Fornholt and Three Up, because based on ceramic evidence, we do think there's a very strong possibility they were occupied at the same time. One major attraction of the valley might have been the obsidian sources. The obsidian comes out of the creeks. There's certainly enough for the people here to use at both sites, but there may have been some contention about rights to use the obsidian in interregional networks, or even rights to use particular outcroppings or to collect from particular beds. We know that there is some burning at the Fort Holt site. I think it would be a mistake to jump to the conclusion that that represents violent destruction. There are number of sites in the southwest that are uh, burned as part of ritual retirement, but at the same time that may be part of how at least the northern room block of Fort Holt ended. There are certainly some ceramic similarities between the people at Fort Holt and at 3UP. It's equally possible that 3UP had such an attractive model or an attractive ideology that the people at Fort Holt eventually joined the larger site at 3UP when they left this site.